How did Cortana, an artificial intelligence, manage to physically restrain the didact? And why does this bridge magically turn on and off? Well, my name is Same Token, and you're watching Hard Light Explained. Halo Media has thus far not extrapolated much on the exact physics of hard light, but the concept isn't as far-fetched as you may think. Photons are the fundamental particle that make up light and are the most visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Essentially, it's what we see around us every day. But while it's normal for light to shine through crystals, researchers at Princeton University have found that it's possible for light to become crystals. Now, while the exact science extends far beyond my understanding of physics, Princeton kindly summarized the concept for lay people like me. So, normally, photons do not interact with each other. But by assembling a kind of artificial atom made up of a superconducting material, and placing this near a superconducting wire containing photons, the photons in the wire take on the characteristics of the artificial atom. This means that the photons begin to interact with each other just like particles do. And essentially, just like particles, visible light can become solid. Imagine shining a torch, but the light emitted is a physical object that interacts with the world. In that case, you could literally place objects directly on the torch beam. And so, because the light is essentially hardened, this is known as solid light, or hard light. While our current research here on Earth is far from creating true solid light, the ancient forerunner race, at the peak of their technological advancement, not only mastered hard light technology, but used it in abundance. Forerunner hard light is capable of bearing extremely heavy loads, while also being versatile enough to recreate complex geometry that can mimic other materials such as metal. Because of this, hard light is significantly involved in forerunner architecture, often appearing virtually indistinguishable from physical construction. And where required, hard light would often be projected over structural support elements of buildings, improving its structural integrity and in many cases simply just making it look better. Forerunner ships also make generous use of hard light. While traditional matter, such as metals, are still used at the ship's core, hard light is interlinked to create modular, functional sections. Because hard light is actively generated, these sections could be morphed into different designs and layouts on command. So, if the ship's captain required a particular type of deck, or perhaps wanted to alter a room for recreational activity, it could be done so almost instantaneously. They would not need to dock the ship and have machines refit sections, as this could be done during transit. And when physical areas of the ship were destroyed, hard light could quickly shield the occupants not only from the vacuum of space, but also from whatever caused the damage in the first place. The strength of hard light led forerunners to utilize the technology as portable shields. Promethean watchers can produce hard light to defend units, while Promethean soldiers can do this on their own. Humanity has managed to adapt this technology into their Mjolnir armor, allowing Spartans to utilize the shield. However, while the shield is deployed, Spartans cannot recharge their own shields or use weapons, which illustrates the huge amount of power hard light requires. And of course, the Forerunners weaponized the technology, appending hard light blades to the arms of Promethean Knights, though the performance during gameplay does appear similar to that of energy swords. And then there's the Forerunner Firearms, which fire hard light rounds that can penetrate and disintegrate foes. Some Halo media suggests that the Covenant could not reverse engineer hard light, though Halo Waypoint mentions that they can control and utilize the technology. So there does appear to be a bit of a discrepancy here, but what we do know is that the Covenant rarely uses hard light, with the Kigyar still using plasma shields rather than hard light technology. Now, this could be due to the fact that the Covenant are simply repurposing existing Forerunner technology, or perhaps they find that the energy draw of hard light is just not worth the trade-off, especially for units like Jackals. 
So it's easy to see why hard light was used by the Forerunners in such abundance. However, while hard light is useful in its ability to shield and morph instantaneously, the fact that it requires constant power makes it potentially volatile. Hard light has three points of failure. Control panels, the hard light emitters, and the energy supplying the hard light. Now, because hard light requires constant power, if any of these three points fail or are accessed by an enemy, then the entire hard light structure and its ability to hold objects vanishes very quickly. This is likely why Halo installations and the Lesser Arc make less use of hard light. And this is coupled with the reality that the aesthetics of the ring were of less importance than their function. As such, most of the material we see on the rings is made of traditional matter. Hard light's use on the installations is primarily for security. For example, the temporary nature of hard light bridges allow only those with clearance to physically travel across them. And we see their use in the flood containment facility on installation 04, where security measures were of exceptional importance. Though throwing a couple of clueless alien species into the mix did show that they weren't foolproof. Hard light bridges can also support extremely heavy weights, ranging from warthogs all the way to scorpion tanks. And if you're daring, hornets as well. But as light bridges use hard light technology, they can become far more than simple bridges. Cortana, while interfacing with the Didact ship, managed to utilize a hard light bridge to render herself into the real world, physically constraining the Didact so the chief could attack. And using this same bridge, she also managed to further shield chief after teleporting him away from the blast of a tactical nuke. So this demonstrates the versatility and strength of hard light technology. But interestingly, despite being far away from the ship, she's still able to harness the technology to touch Chief's armor. So what we can assume is the remains of the ship were scattered and there must have been hard light emitters nearby that survived the explosion and still had power, which again demonstrates their hardiness. Cortana's use of hard light here is perhaps the most exciting. While we knew that hard light could be made to mimic the properties and shapes of objects, Cortana used it to create the physical form of her being. And so, hard light has many uses, from the aesthetics of ships to the security failsafes of the Halo installations. And incredibly, humanity has found ways of implementing this technology. And so, time will tell how hard light is used in future Halo titles. Let me know how you would like to see hard light implemented in Halo Infinite. The descriptions of the technology on the rings have been fairly vague, with Halo Cryptum describing hard light as acting like the spokes of a wheel during its use on the original Halo installations. Perhaps with Installation 07 being one of the original Halo rings, Halo Infinite will shed more light on the different uses of hard light. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more Halo content. I'll catch you next time.